So you may already know that using LinkedIn automation software goes against LinkedIn's rules. But what you may be surprised to learn is that it's not just automation software. There's other things that LinkedIn doesn't like you doing and it doesn't matter if you're using automation software or not. So in this video, I wanna break down two things. Number one, how can you use LinkedIn safely, no matter if you're using LinkedIn automation software or not? And number two, if you do decide to use LinkedIn automation software, then what is the safest automation tool out there right now? So to get started, like I said, it's not just automation software that LinkedIn doesn't like. In fact, many years ago, I actually hired a virtual assistant to do what LinkedIn automation software would do. And I did that because I wanted to follow all the LinkedIn rules. So LinkedIn said you can't use automation software, but at the same time, I didn't wanna do all this manual work myself. So I just hired a virtual assistant to do it because it's pretty easy to do once you know how to do it and what you need to do. It's just very time consuming. That's why there's this automation software that you can use that automates a lot of these manual and tedious tasks. So I hired a virtual assistant to do what automation software would do. And guess what? I still got restricted from doing certain things with LinkedIn and I wasn't using any automation software at all. So that taught me an important lesson that when it comes to using LinkedIn automation software, it's not so much about the software, it's all about how you are using uh, LinkedIn or how you're using automation software on LinkedIn. So again, it's all about how are you using LinkedIn? Now, even though I was able to contact LinkedIn and get my account unrestricted again, I still want to record this video to help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made and some of the mistakes that I've seen other people make in the past so that you can avoid getting restricted on LinkedIn. You can use LinkedIn safely to generate more leads and more business and also so that you can automate your LinkedIn activity in a way that doesn't get your account blocked or restricted in any way. So let's go through how you can do that. So first, let's talk about how to use LinkedIn safely, and then I'll talk about which is the best LinkedIn automation software to use when it comes to using LinkedIn in a safe way. So first of all, when it comes to using LinkedIn safely, I want to go through these rules or guidelines so that you know what they are. No matter what automation tool you're using, you can always keep these guidelines in the back of your mind. And even if you decide not to use any automation software, at least you know what are these rules and guidelines so that you can avoid making any mistakes. Because like I said earlier in this video, it doesn't matter if you're using automation software or not, you can still get your account restricted even if you don't use any automation software, if you do things in the wrong way. So there's three main things I want you to keep in mind when using LinkedIn safely. Number one is your daily activity on LinkedIn. Number two is the time between different actions that you take on LinkedIn. And number three are the devices that you use on LinkedIn. So the first one is your daily activity on LinkedIn. And what this basically means is when you're using LinkedIn day to day, so in a 24 hour period, there's different actions or things that you can do on LinkedIn. For example, you could connect to someone, that would be one action. You could also send someone a message, that would be another action. So everything that you do on LinkedIn counts as an action. And there's a limit to how many actions you can do in a 24 hour period. Now, depending if you have a free LinkedIn account or if you have a paid LinkedIn account, there's different restrictions and LinkedIn doesn't openly say what these restrictions are. But just to give you a general guideline, if you keep the number 150 in the back of your mind, 150 is roughly how many actions you can take in a 24 hour period without getting your account restricted. When you start going higher than that, you start going a little bit into the danger zone. So you want to be very careful with that. So if you want to be safe, just make sure you don't go past 150 actions in a 24 hour period. So to give you an example, you could send out 100 LinkedIn invitations to potential clients that would count as 100 actions. And then you could also send out 50 messages on LinkedIn that would count as 50 actions. So in total, you've used 150 actions. The second thing that you need to keep in mind is your time between each action. So LinkedIn basically wants you using LinkedIn like a normal person. So if you're messaging someone, then you're connecting to someone, or maybe you're connecting to lots of different people really quickly, it starts to look a little bit strange to LinkedIn and it starts to look a little bit spammy. And that's where you can start getting some problems. So whenever you're going to take another action, you want to make sure that there's a delay 
between the time that you, you do the first action and the time that you do the second action. So how long should this delay be? Well, LinkedIn doesn't again tell you any specific numbers. So this is just based from experience. But what I have found is that if you do things too fast, and by too fast, I mean if you if within one minute or less you're connecting to new people and you're messaging new people, that is what I would classify as too fast. But if you give yourself a minute or more between each action, then that will obviously look more natural to LinkedIn. It will look like you're not just trying to add random people, you're actually spending some more time and thought into what you're doing on LinkedIn. And then that's going to make sure that it doesn't flag up any restrictions within your LinkedIn account. So that's something to just keep in mind. Now, when it comes to automation software for making sure you have a time delay between different actions, not all automation tools actually do this right out of the box. So this is something I'm gonna cover in a little bit more detail when I answer the second question, which is what is the best LinkedIn automation tool to use when it comes to using LinkedIn safely. But for now, let's move on to the last and third thing that you need to keep in mind when it comes to using LinkedIn in a safe way and that's your devices. So what devices are you using when you're on LinkedIn? Now, if you use multiple devices, let's say you're using your, your laptop and then maybe you have your phone as well, that's two devices. Now you can usually get away with using two devices, that's okay, but if you have like an iPad and then you have like another laptop and another computer and maybe you've shared your login with a virtual assistant or someone else, right? The more devices that LinkedIn sees that are logged into your account, uh, the more danger it puts your account in because it looks like you're doing some sort of suspicious activity. It doesn't look like a normal, uh, you, like normal user activity. So you just want to keep in mind how many devices are you using to log into LinkedIn and reduce those devices as much as you can. These days, I only use one or two devices maximum when it comes to using LinkedIn. So try to reduce how many devices you're using on LinkedIn as much as you can. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, or if you're not sure how many devices you're currently using, you can go to your account settings, and in your account settings, you can go to see how many devices you actually have logged in into LinkedIn. And if, you're, if you see some devices in there that you don't recognize, you can just sign out of all devices. Or if it looks like you're only logged into maybe one or two devices, then that's fine, you can just leave it as it is. But definitely take a look at that and make sure you're not logged into too many devices because this can flag up suspicious activity when using LinkedIn. And I just wanna throw in one more bonus thing to keep in mind, and this isn't so much about how you're using LinkedIn, but this is how people respond to you using LinkedIn. And this is when it comes to you sending out LinkedIn invitations, you want to make sure that at least 20% of the invitations that you send out are being accepted by people. If LinkedIn starts to see that a lot of your invitations are not getting accepted by people, it's most likely going to one day restrict your account from adding new invitations because it thinks that you might be just spamming people to increase your connections. So if you do find that you're connecting to people and they're not connecting back to you, then maybe you need to have a look at what message are you using to connect to people? Who are you actually targeting? And what does your LinkedIn profile look like? Does it actually look appealing to the people that you're looking to connect to? So keep those things in mind when it comes to using LinkedIn safely. Now, if you want to automate a lot of your LinkedIn lead generation, and if you want to do this in a safe way, you can definitely use LinkedIn tools to help you, LinkedIn automation tools to help you. Now again, this is not recommended by LinkedIn, so you have to be careful when you're using these tools. But the main thing that I found when it comes to using LinkedIn automation tools is that it's not so much about the tool that LinkedIn doesn't like, it's more about how you're using those tools. Because obviously with automation tools, it gives you a lot of power and you could actually use that power for bad. You could spam people, you could send them links to things that they don't want to uh, see, like links to your products and services and things like that when they haven't even asked for any of that stuff. So these are all the bad ways of using LinkedIn automation software. But if you do things the right way, and if you do things in a, in a way that basically you're just using the automation tools to replace what you would otherwise be doing manually, then you will find that you can actually use this without any problems. But like I said, not all automation tools are the same. So when it comes to using a safe LinkedIn automation tool, two of the most popular ones are going to be Meet Alfred and also Linked Helper 2. So when it comes to using one of these uh, tools, which one is going to be the safest one for you? And I'm just gonna focus on these two tools, but no matter what tool you're thinking about using, just make sure it does what I'm about to say in the rest of this video. 
So two of those things that I mentioned previously, when it comes to uh, the first thing would be how many actions are you taking in a 24 hour period? And what is the time delay between different actions that you take on LinkedIn? These are the two things that you need to keep in mind when using LinkedIn automation tools. And you need to check, does this automation tool allow you to change these settings so that you can make sure you're going to be compliant with all of LinkedIn's uh, rules and guidelines and things like that. So in the LinkedIn automation tool that you're using, just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to using Meet Alfred and Linked Helper, for Meet Alfred, even though it's a really nice looking tool, the problem I found is that it doesn't give you a lot of control when it comes to the time delay settings between actions. And from what I've seen, it tends to work quite fast. And it's probably probably working a little bit too fast for my liking. And I personally would like to see more control and to be able to allow users to slow down how long it takes between different actions. Now they might add this feature in the future as of recording this, this video, I don't see that feature on there. But when it comes to using Linked Helper, that on the other hand does give you a lot of control. In fact, you can control pretty much almost everything when it comes to using LinkedIn, including what are the delay settings? How long is it going to delay between sending one message and another message or bet between taking one action and another action? And you get a lot of control when it comes to using LinkedIn Helper too. So my recommendation, if you want to use the safest LinkedIn automation tool, as of right now, as of recording this video, I would say go with Linked Helper 2 because that automation tool gives you the most control. And again, you could use this tool in the wrong way, like you could use this tool and you could still send out messages and connection requests and do lots of things in a fast way which will start to flag up suspicious activity with LinkedIn. You could do that with that tool, but the beauty of this tool is that it allows you the option not to do that. And not only can you play things safe by using Linked Helper 2 by changing the different settings, but you can play things even extra safe because you are in control of all of those settings. So if you want to be extra safe, you can just make the delay settings even longer than what would be the standard uh, delay settings. So that's just something to keep in mind when it comes to using LinkedIn automation software. Make sure that you can change those settings so that you have control with your LinkedIn account so that you can do things in a safe way. Now, this is still no guarantee that your account isn't going to get restricted or anything like that. But the good thing is, is that if LinkedIn does restrict your account like it uh, did to me in the past when using virtual assistants, you can still contact LinkedIn and usually they will actually reopen that account or uh, reactivate or remove the restriction that you have. So again, just keep that in mind when you're using any LinkedIn automation software and also keep those tips in mind when it comes to using LinkedIn in general. Just at the end of the day, make sure you're using LinkedIn in a way that you are not spamming people, in a way that you're providing value to people and you're actually building up a network of people that are interested in what it is that you do and how you can actually help them. Now, if you want to learn more about the right strategy and the strategy that I use for myself and clients when it comes to using LinkedIn, then be sure to check out my training. Uh, you can go to salesappointmentsmasterclass.com. And if you sign up for that, you can watch a video that goes through in detail the strategy that I use for myself and my clients to generate predictable leads and appointments every single month, not just on LinkedIn, but also using Google and also using Facebook. So if you'd like to learn more about that, you can sign up for that video. But other than that, hopefully you found this video helpful. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.